What's up, y'all? It's Caleb Sasser, and you're watching Swap. All right, what's up, Caleb? Welcome to welcome to Swap Sessions. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So it's it's crazy. Um, like I was telling you before, like I watch I watch The Voice on and off. Typically, I watch like the blinds, and then we'll like watch some of the knockout sessions, and then you just kind of like fall off, yeah. um, and catch up later down the line. Um, but we do this thing where it's when we're watching it, we say at what point we would hit a buzzer. <laughs> right so you start singing and you were like maybe three seconds and i was like buzzer <laughs> and it was your voice one is is amazing um so i before we get to the whole the whole voice thing as i'm sure everything has blown up since that point um i want to start with where your where your singing began like what was your childhood like were you one of those kids who's been singing all their lives or something that like came later on in life yeah, so I, I grew up singing in church. Um, okay. I think I joined the choir around age four or five, and I had my first solo around age six or seven. It was Oh How I Love Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you had no problem tearing the church down as, as a kid. Oh, yeah. That's literally what gave me the passion for music. Once I had that my first solo, I knew just from like the reaction of the congregation and how it made me feel and then just, just being on that stage, it, I knew I wanted to do that forever, basically. Yeah. And it's I know it's it's challenging um, when you start singing in church and then like going into like a little secular world. Um, older church folks don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> The younger crowd, we don't we don't we don't mind as much. But that older crowd, like they they are not a fan of secular music as long as it's in church. Um, once they get home, you know, Patty LaBelle, Anita Baker, all that is like is yeah. happening. Yeah. <laughs> so. So how long were you singing in church before you started singing secular music? Or was that something that you've always kind of intertwined? Well, growing up, my mom and dad were pretty strict. So we could only listen to gospel music for, for a really long time. Um, then when they separated, that's kind of when we started breaking off and doing our own thing. So that was probably about my high school year is when middle end of middle school, beginning of high school is when I started breaking into listening to like Faith Evans and Beyonce and John Legend, like really getting into like all the other stuff that I've never heard before. Um, so what was that like, like when you first started hearing that music, what did that feel like for you? It felt like a journey and it, it really honestly felt like nothing that I'd heard before because I would only been listening to gospel. So I remember the first song specifically was Beyonce's Irreplaceable. And my mom would yeah. always hear me listening to that and like she'd walk in the room, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know. It was just something about that, how it was just so groovy, but it was it was still like it was connecting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy. I, I have a I have a vivid memory of a guy singing Irreplaceable in Kmart loud. <laughs> like it was loud, loud. Like a concert. <laughs> it was like he was he was singing the song, um, but it was it was very much a. You can hear him in the next owl, but he he was <laughs> literally like a baritone. So it's like you hear this this guy just like Ooh, to the left, to the left, and, I'm like, <laughs> and he he was going in. And uh, I, the memory of that song always brings me back to that point. So it's it's something that is interesting. Um, who was your who was your favorite gospel artist growing up? Um, because I know you've if you started singing at six and you didn't stop until high school, like you have some. Okay. Some depth. So like growing, I have, I, I can give you like a top four or five. I don't know if I have, okay. a um, but definitely growing up, we were listening to a lot of Kurt Franklin and Mary Mary, Yolanda Adams and CC Winans were probably like some of the main ones, CC and BB. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mary Mary and Kurt Franklin are probably the top two for me. Yeah. I laugh a lot. Cause I didn't growing up, I didn't know BB and CC were gospel singers. Yeah, <laughs> um, because their songs, it's like you can just kind of place them it's, anywhere. It's, it's just it's like a little R and B. <laughs> yeah, they got they got a real a real soul groove. Um, so when I found out they were gospel singer, I was like, 
always yeah. <laughs> has this always been a thing their producers but, have been doing some good stuff <laughs> yeah so when you when you start singing and you you get or when you start in high school singing more of like the again the faith evans the john legends um i'm sure like the talent show kind of things start happening um when did you know you were really good um when did I know I was really good? I, I feel like I've always known that, like, kind of in my head, like, especially from a young age, starting at, like, middle school, that's really where I really started doing the talent shows. Okay. My first talent show was in eighth grade, or seventh or eighth grade, and I did Count On Me by Whitney Houston, um, and I got first place, and that's that's really where it all kind of, I wouldn't say it all started, but that's, it was another step on the, on the, on the stone, so it, it, was, it was leading me to where I wanted to be. Yeah. Since you started in church, you, you you're used to singing in front of people, in front of crowds. Um, has there is there still nervousness? Was there nervousness when you decided you wanted to like do this for real? For the voice or just like as a career? Just in general. Um, no, really, honestly, like when I'm singing, that's the most free that I feel. So like it doesn't make me nervous to like necessarily sing. Even like wow. my for the voice, I wasn't nervous because their backs were turned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was singing in the room and then their chairs just were turned around. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I always think to myself, again, I'm not I'm not a singer. Um, I would think that that's probably the easy part. It's like it's nervous because you want the chair to turn, but it's like I don't have to look at you judging me while I'm waiting for that chair to turn. Yeah, um, that, I would say that was literally the the easiest part of the whole entire voice process because their backs were turned and I couldn't see their facial expressions. I didn't like couldn't see them judging me, so it was it made yeah. it <laughs> What made you let's just, let's just go to this song. What made you pick this Tony Braxton song, and what made you arrange it the way that you did? Because it was it's mind blowing. Like, what made you do the, do it that way? <laughs> So I didn't even really know I was going to be singing that song until about a month before the audition. So they give us about a list of 400 songs and we choose about 20 of them. And then they choose what our audition song is going to be. So oh, wow. That's how that worked out. And then it just so happened that another sad love song was my number one pick on the song. Like it was the number one on my list. Yeah. I had a cover of it on Instagram about a year ago and it was kind of similar to the arrangement, but I just had time, more time since I knew that was going to be on the, the my audition for The Voice. I had more time to polish it and kind yeah. of tweak it the way I wanted it to be a little bit more because the Instagram video was about a minute. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's where I got the idea from. Now, when you when you do this and the chairs start turning, my my memory of watching it is it wasn't necessarily you. It was your dad crying. <laughs> um, I don't. I know you probably can't explain that moment for him, but what do you think that moment was for him? Oh, I I feel that moment with him because he's been the person who's been taking me to all of my auditions. So I've been doing auditions for American Idol, X Factor, like Sunday's Best, and The Voice since I was a sophomore in high school. Oh wow! And he's been the person like driving me across all these states and for hours. Um, so I was so glad that he was able to share that moment with me and I could really see like how happy and like how proud he was. Yeah. What's that, what's, what's that like, um, going from audition to audition, um, and then finally getting to an audition and everything goes right. At first it, it, it was a little discouraging cause it's like, dang, can I really sing? Like I'm keep hearing no after no after no, but once it finally gets to the, that one yes is like everything that you've been working for is is paid off. So like as soon as they started turning around, I was like in my head, I was like, wow, they I'm on the voice right now. <laughs> but then I'm also like, don't look at them because I don't want to like, love their heads. <laughs> but and it, it was crazy. Yeah, is watching it, we I couldn't tell there's anything else on your mind. Um, like one would think that everything else is blanked out and you're just kind of like in this zone. Um but to know that like there's so much more still going through your head while you're still masterfully killing this song. Um, when you're done, 
and you you finish the song, you see everything, and it's just like we hear. Um, what is what is that feeling like inside? Is it like again, my my thought would be like I would be literally shaking. Like I, I did this. It worked. If this is happening, like, is that kind of the same space you were in? Yeah. As soon as I finished, I was what was going through my mind. I was just like, I just sang this cover in front of these amazing, amazing coaches who have amazing careers that I also want to do, and they all turned around. So that was it. Was kind of a lot to process, and I don't even remember most of the moments. Like, with unless I'm glad they recorded it because I really blacked out for <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> Um, and they didn't even they don't even show you guys the whole entire thing they showed like five minutes of that that was about like 15 20 minutes of like them just talking and like getting to know each other but it was it was it was a crazy feeling to like actually be there and talking to them yeah what post that song and you go through you know numerous rounds what is what's the what's the takeaway from the voice um i know a lot of people who want to audition. I know there's a lot of people who audition, um, but a lot of people who want to, they don't really know kind of what they're getting into. Um, what was your what was your takeaway from being on the show? I like this question. I, I get asked this question quite a bit. And I, I like to say that I got everything that I needed from, from the show. Yeah. Because yes, I definitely would have loved to stay and go further, but the the impact that I've given from or impact that I've received from my audition and from my other performances, I feel like I've touched voices. I mean, my voice has touched other people as well as inspired people. And that's honestly my goal. Like I have a tattoo that says, I got to reach the world and let my voice be heard. Um, it's a song that I wrote like in college, but being able to be on the voice and actually do that, it, it feels amazing. Yeah. Has, have you, or do you know of Toni Braxton hearing the song? Oh yeah, she um she shared it the the next day. The next day, <laughs> she tagged me in a post and she said that she was like she loved how I flipped another sad love song and she wishes me the best on the voice and she said she loved it. That feeling, what is what was what was that moment? That was absolutely crazy. I remember seeing the notification come on my phone and I literally would like stop what I was doing and try to call <laughs> everybody. I, knew. I didn't even open it. And I was just like. Tony Braxton just it said Tony Braxton mentioned you in her story, and I was just like freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> so now, I mean, because obviously popularity skyrockets after after you are on The Voice, um, especially when you do what you did. Um, how have you adjusted to that? Like, what was what has that been like? I know there's a lot of people reaching out to you. There's a lot of, I'm sure, a lot of like offers. Um, to record things like that what's what's that what's that life like for you now um i'm still trying to to balance it all um it has been been a lot i'm um, trying to be organized and respond to all the emails and the messages and but i'm, I'm thankful for it because it's honestly what i've been the goal of what i've been trying to do so i'm adjusting to organizing myself a little bit more and being able to to be present in all of those moments and take it in as well when i'm doing those amazing things yeah yeah how is i guess how's everyday life at this point besides is, i'm adjusting to it i used to be a middle school music teacher and so after the voice i stopped doing that so now i'm doing music full-time so just nice congratulations sing, thank you um just singing and and working I, I still do voice lessons as well but that's that's pretty much the life yeah what do you what do you have planned because I again I told you I wanted I wanted like a whole album of of music that sounds like another bad love song like in that kind of style yeah. like that that smooth coffee shop dim light candles lit kind of vibe. Um, is there a album project coming out? There is an EP coming out at the first quarter of this year. I don't have the nice. date, but it's definitely in the works, and I'm working on it. And it's going to sound I wouldn't say similar, but it's that same like takeaway of that's my style. I like to call it singer songwriter soul. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a little bit of jazz. It's a little bit of R and B. It's a little bit of um, like soul, like all meshed into this one good one. Like, yeah. You did a little scat at the end of your um at the end of another bad love song, which made John stand up. Um, 
because it's, it's crazy. It's crazy when you when you know there's a, a gospel upbringing and then a secular merge. Um, where does your where does your inspiration come from? Because it doesn't sound too much like anything that I heard. So when I heard, I was like, this is the closest thing I can think of is like a Sam Smith or like a John Legend slow down kind of thing. Where's your where's your inspiration for for your style at? Hmm. Honestly, I I would I don't even know what the inspiration would be. I know I like to listen to other artists. Like Jasmine Sullivan is my favorite singer. Right. Um, Jasmine Sullivan and Brandy is where I really like take notes from. But when I say in terms of inspiration, I really just sing the stuff, sing the songs, and really just fill it out the way that I want to hear it. Um, yeah. So I per try to perfect it until it's like. That's gold. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 uh, that's interesting because Brandy's voice is like she sings like an instrument, mm -hmm. and I I've grown to appreciate her more as I grow older because I I realize how difficult that is, and like to to hear you kind of do that same thing and like utilize your voice to where it just kind of goes where it goes and it's like playing along with the music. It's it's a skill that a lot of people never learn and to know that you can probably just do that naturally is, is mind blowing. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's nuts. So <laughs> I always say, I wish I can sing it. If I could, people would hate me because I would never stop. <laughs> <laughs> so if I had that voice, it would be a problem. I probably, that dude. Been yeah, but I feel like if they actually could sing, they would be tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> No, I'll, be, I'll be that dude in Kmart <laughs> singing irreplaceable in, in the other album. <laughs> All right. So what do you ultimately, what do you, what do you want? What do you want your career to become? Like where, where do you see yourself going? So my goal for my career is to continue to sing on these large stages. I want stages. I want to sing in like arenas and like do shows and also like record music for myself, like make albums and also like write songs for other people. Um, yeah. So that, that's really what I want to do full time is just perform and write and record. Yeah. I mean, one congratulations because you're 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 taking all the right steps, um, which is is great to do that in the industry and be able to just kind of flow where you want things to go. Um, a lot of people don't take time to make sure that they're developing themselves and career wise properly. So the fact that you're doing that, I think, is is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Um, what is what is your favorite song to sing? Mm. Like what's your go what's your go-to song? Like if you're in the kitchen just randomly washing dishes, like what song ends up popping in your head or does it not matter? That's a hard question. <laughs> I, um right now I've been listening to a lot of, of Yeba. Um, okay. and I love her song October Skies. Okay. Um, as well as what was it? I've been, oh, dang. October Skies and Officially Missing You by Timmy are probably two of my go-to. And How Deep Is Your Love? Those are like my top three right now. Officially Missing You is like. I do that one at my show. Is this one of my favorite to, to sing? I'm gonna have to find that. It's on, I'm taking, it's, a, it's a video somewhere of you singing. Yeah, there's one on YouTube. I'm gonna find that. Like as soon as we're done, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go watch that. I'll be playing the piano on that one. See, so wait, you're instrumentalist as well. You can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Said you know what to do, what you need to do. <laughs> that is hilarious. All right, so where can I'm sure I'm, a, I'm definitely going to share your your Instagram with everyone. Um, I'll share your YouTube. Where is there anywhere else people can find you? Are you on like you know Spotify, SoundClouds, things like that? Okay. Even my blind audition, I released that song as well. Another sad love song. That's on Spotify, Apple Music, title, as well as my original music. I have a single out called "With You." Um, you can find that anywhere you listen to music um, under my name, Caleb Snapser. Perfect, perfect. Well, look, man, congratulations again. Um, it, you have you have a voice that made me pause the TV and go find your Instagram. Um, <laughs> that it doesn't happen often, but I was. I was determined to make sure I found you. So 
congratulations on everything um keep doing what you're doing i'm gonna look out for that ep um and then we'll just we'll go from there thank you so much for reaching out and i've enjoyed this interview so uh thank you so much absolutely and i'll talk to you soon thank you you have a great one all right thanks you too take care